Arise, shine, for this is your time. This is the day the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because we got a breath. If you got breath, you got life. If you got life, that means you still got an opportunity to complete your assignments. Blessings. I'm J.L. Gibbons. Welcome to Arise, Shine, Morning Devotional and Prayer. When I say we don't have powerful prayer, but we pray to a powerful God who can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask, think, and even imagine. Listen, this is a new day that God has given. So God is giving you a new day. Give God some praise for the day. Give God some thanks for the things that he is doing, the things he has done. Give God some praise for the things that he has brought you out and that he's bringing you through. Give God some praise of the things that he has supplied to you. What has God done for you? Has he done anything good? Has he put a roof upon your head, clothes upon your back, food upon your table? Has he watched over your children? Has he kept you in the midst of storms, situations, trials, tribulations? Has he given you new life when you was in a pit? Has he delivered you out when your mind was uneased? Did he give you that peace that surpassed the um, Understanding. Did he do anything good or praiseworthy? Well, give God praise, even if you don't have any of those things. Why? Because he is Lord. He is God and he's worthy because he is the great creator. He's the great I am. He is the strength. He's the rock. He is the everlasting God who has brought us into life. Thank the Lord for life. Thank the Lord for strength. Thank the Lord for the little things. Thank the Lord that you can take a breath without any help. Thank the Lord for your feet being able to walk. Thank the Lord that you're able to talk and hear and eyes to see certain things that we take for granted. But I'm determined going forward for the remainder of my life to have an attitude of gratitude. Thanking God even in the small things. Thanking to God for the things that we take for granted at times. But this morning that you have this day, this morning that you have this opportunity, say, Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you thanks. Lord, I lift you up. I exalt your holy name. This is that day because you have today and we're grateful. Tomorrow's gone. We'll not come back. We're not going back into the past. You may have messed up. You may have said some things. Things was a struggle maybe yesterday. But I thank God he says new mercies each and every day. I speak and declare mercies for you today. That as you give God praise, as you lift up his holy name, say, Lord, I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your strength. I thank you for your goodness and all that you have done in my life. Thank you for giving me that peace, that joy, that happiness, that I'm here today. And I have a clear mind that my mind is at peace. My mind is at ease. Lord God, I'm not holding on to the past. I'm not holding on to what I didn't achieve yesterday, but I'm going to use today. I'm going to maximize my 24. Lord, how may I be a, of a service to you? How can I bring joy? How can I share your good news? How can I testify of what you have done with someone in my life today? So we thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord God, for the direction. We thank you even in your correction. We thank you for the blessings of the Lord that makes us rich and has no sorrow. Lord God, we remain door for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I thank you for this morning that we have, that some people didn't receive this morning, but we have the opportunity to be on this side of glory. And Lord God, to embrace you this morning, we say that we love you. We appreciate you. We adore you for your goodness, your love, your faithfulness unto us. We thank you for this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, this is a great day. Uh, everything might not be your way, but I'm always determined to focus on what I do have instead of what I don't have. Uh, so have that in the forefront of your mind as you go and start your day. Listen, um, I'm in this series uh, where I'm speaking on becoming fully persuaded and determined. Uh, that as you embark in this thing that we call life, that we be fully persuaded on the things that God has spoken into our life, that we become fully persuaded on the things that God said that he's going to do uh, through us and to us, uh, that I'm more confident than ever before, that I'm becoming more confident than ever before. Um, we, when we accepted eternal life, salvation, um, there was no certificate sign. It was nothing, but we were persuaded. We had the knowing that we were part of to 
brought into the fold of God, that we was brought into the fellowship of God. Um, okay, nobody tell you nothing different. There may be people who don't believe in God, and guess what? God has given us the freedom, the free will, to not believe. Do you have belief and faith in something? Uh, do you believe in nothing? And that's okay. That's your choice. But for those who have the encounter of the Lord, when something that you know, tangible, something that wasn't made up, something that's because your parents told you or you went to a Sunday service and Bible study. No, we're talking about something that's very tangible. When you had that encounter with the Lord, we're talking about being fully persuaded. And just as we was fully persuaded, God wants you to be fully persuaded on the promises and the thing that God has for your life. What God has for you is for you. Um, that this year, you're going to be determined to achieve. You're going to be determined to become. You're going to be determined to do all that God has for you. And so yesterday, uh, I, I began talking about Abraham a little bit and how Abraham considered not when he was very old. He considered not that uh, him and his wife was beyond childbearing age. They was in a place where doubt could very come into their mind. And I like to say, doubt your doubts. Uh, when the enemy in situations try to speak something different, say, I doubt it, uh, that you're not going to make it through. Say, I doubt that, that you're not going to be able to achieve. I doubt that, that, that your marriage won't be uh, coming together. Say, I doubt that. And I just trust in what God says. And I doubt what the world says. And I doubt what uh, man may have to say about it or the enemy or my, my voice that's speaking falsely of what God says. Um, so he was fully persuaded and he had the faith to believe even at a very old age that he would conceive. Why? Because God gave him a word. And I'm speaking to someone that God has given you a word. God has stirred something in you. God has placed something in you. Uh, that seed right there did not die. It may be dormant, but I declare it's going to come alive. Um, let's go to the foundation scripture for today. It's in Genesis uh, chapter 18, verse 12. It says, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, As I am wax old, should I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which I am old? Verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Have you ever times where you're you're kind of snickering, you're kind of laughing, like and really like you the uncertainty you gotta laugh about you like how's this is supposed to happen? Like this situation is very funny. I don't see how this is supposed to turn around in my favor. And we laugh about things and we kind of like brush them off. And one thing that the Lord is replying to Sarah with her laugh, um, rightfully so, because she's in the carnality of, I know according to the world standards at this certain age, I cannot no longer is my egg should be functioning. My husband can't even function like that. But I want to say to you what the Lord said to Sarah. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Uh, that's the thing that you question yourself when you're in those predicaments. Is this too hard for the Lord? Is this something that God cannot do? Uh, as Jesus told us, he said, with men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So I step out of the men realm and I step into the God realm where God says all things are possible to those who believe. Um, I get questions on certain things and I said, well, if you don't believe in that, why would God even do it for you? You don't even think he can do it. You, you, you already in self doubt. It'd be different if you question and say, well, Lord, um, how are we going to do this? So let's give the example. Mary got, uh, visited by the angel Gabriel and said, blessings woman, you child of the most high you're gonna you're gonna be a mother to the messiah right there she's a virgin how is she gonna give birth but the angel gave her information 
And Mary did not doubt all she said is how is this going to be since I know no man. And the angel confirmed to her how it was going to be. See, there was no doubt in her. All she did was had more questions. God doesn't mind you question them. But when doubt comes about, it becomes a different thing. Don't doubt, just question. Say, Lord, how am I supposed to navigate through this? I trust in you. I lean into you. I'm, I want directions from you. So, Mary said this, be it unto you. Whatever God says, I believe. And she did concede. Whether you believe it or not, those who are out there, sometimes we have people come on who don't believe in God, and that's fine. But then we had another situation. Mary had a cousin named Elizabeth at an old age, just as Sarah was. The wife, the husband, John's father, Zacharias, had a visitation. Same scenario. And was talking about what was going to transpire and how John was going to come forth through Elizabeth's womb. And as this situation occurs, what does Zacharias say? Well, how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> right? The doubt. What did the angel of the Lord do? The angel of the Lord shut his mouth. Because you got to understand that you have death and life in the power of your tongue. And that you can hold and withhold things from coming to you because of what the things that you're speaking. Um, when you're fully persuaded, as Mary was, birth will come. But if you speak in doubt, delay, resistance, because you can speak in the atmosphere. And as you speak the wrong things, it can hold up the promises that God wants and has for you. When he spoke, he said, I have to shut this guy's mouth. If I don't, he will abort the whole mission. Because John had to come first before Jesus came on onto the scene. Because John was the forerunner to pave the way for the Messiah. So we can't have no delays due to someone who's in unbelief. So the angels took the matter of his own hand. He said, I'm coming to you from the Most High with a promise. And you're telling me that you don't believe and what I'm saying, okay, I'm going to show you. So he shut his mouth for the season. Amen. So as he shut his mouth for the season, the conceit, he conceived. Elizabeth conceived. I'm saying that your vision, your promise comes and will conceive when you are attention about the words that you speak. Speak over your life. And as you speak, you become fully persuaded because you're speaking life, not death. Let me go back to Sarah real quick. If you remember that Sarah gave Hagar her servant to Abraham. Now they up in age. Something, let me show you what God showed me. Sarah said, I'm going to help the Lord. Because obviously my husband really truly believes that we are supposed to bear a child. But I know I can't bear a child. So on the part of him having, her having faith, watch this. She had faith enough that if I take, if he takes my servant, he can have this child. And what God was showing me was she spoke it into existence. She spoke the Ishmael into existence. But if she had the same faith with the Isaac and said to herself, be it unto me, Lord, not laughing. She would have had Isaac a long time ago. She would have had Isaac a long time ago. And you have that Isaac. You have that promise that you should have had it a long time ago. But what was you speaking? What was you saying? I, I seen it very clearly that as she spoke it, that's what the Lord showed me. She spoke and said, here, take my servant, my, my woman's servant and bear this child. 
she released the word. Abraham conceived with Hagar. Ishmael came forth. Then Sarah became grievous and jealous in a sense because she's wondering why didn't I conceive? But what the Lord showed me was you didn't believe. And this happened before the laughing, before God had to step on the scene and say, listen, I'm overriding your doubt. And sometimes that's what God would do. Like, because some things got to come into fruition. Some things have to. Like, some things you don't have no say-so in it, in, this, in some particular matters. Because the nations were being born through Abraham. And through that seed would come Jesus. And through that seed, we was conceived and brought into the fellowship. So, some things God would override because he has to. Because guess what? His word cannot come back void. Same thing as he did with Zechariah. I have to shut this guy's mouth. Some of you have to shut your mouth to become fully persuaded. If you're not going to say the right thing, shut it down. But I want you to have a mindset. I'm be becoming fully persuaded. I'm going to speak the right words in my life, over my life, over my, over my children, over my wife, over my husband, over my business, over my ministry. Whatever it is that God, he said, the one way that you become fully persuaded is what you speak in the atmosphere and what you believe. And Abraham wavered not. He considered not the oldness of his womb, of Sarah's womb or his body. Uh, don't think about things that didn't move. Don't think about things that didn't happen. Think about the things that's going to happen. Um, time waits for no man. Time continues to move forward. And I want you to be like time and move forward. Move out of that place of doubt. Move out of that place of uncertainty. Move into the place of, I believe what God has for me. I believe what God has spoken to me. I believe the word of God, and I'm going to stand on the foundation of God because I've seen it time and time before. What brings the hindrance to being fully persuaded is the words that you say. Um, those people who you may be around can influence and say, You've been talking about this for a while. I still haven't seen it. Uh, you said that this was going to happen. I still haven't seen it. What did he say? Let's go back to the text. The Lord spoke to Sarah. Where did Sarah laugh? Say, shall I of a sh sh should I surely bear a child? Am I old? Verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? And at the appointed time, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. I'm declaring to you right now, it is appointed time, and that you will bring forth. You will bear that promise that God said. For is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I'm speaking that I want you to become fully persuaded because it is an appointed time unto you. It's an appointed time of coming out of drought. It's an appointed time to coming out of lack. It's an appointed time to heal and to, and to mend and your mind being at peace. There's an appointed time for you. There's an appointed time for me. And God says, I just need you to believe. And as he said, you shall bear life. Those things that are not bearing life, God is speaking to someone. Be fully persuaded. The life is coming. Death has been knocking too long. The uncertainty has been there un too long. The almost, the spirit of almost been in your life too long. And you're coming out at the appointed time this season. As we are in March and we're marching forward, we're marching out of the old, we're marching out of the stagnant, we're marching out of limitations, we're marching out of frustration, we're marching forward, forward march, not backwards. And as you have to determine, as Mary did, be it unto me. I want you to have it a be it unto me in this season. I'm fully persuaded, as Mary was, something that was impossible. And the scripture text came back, is anything too hard for God? Once again, have that resonating in your mind. Is anything, the question is, you, you question the situation. Is this too hard for God? 
And the answer is, be it unto me. The answer is what you believe. So when the situations in life circumstance come, you say to yourself, is anything too hard for God? And then as you question, you look at it, question, you look at it, and ponder the thing, and you say, Lord, be it unto me. I remember a time when God spoke, uh, situations was going on financially, you know, I'm doing what I need to do. And the Lord said, you are rich. You're, you're determining your circumstance. You're letting your circumstance pay more dividends than what I said. And I had a moment just like Sarah. And I and I and, and I said, okay. Because I uh, because I looked at the circumstance and I remember I got one of the biggest rebukes with inside myself. I felt that thing. Like you little, you, you gonna doubt that I can't? And believe me, that season didn't turn around <laughs> that quickly after that. But what I did learn from it, oh, be it unto me, Lord. Yes, you already healed. I receive it. Something comes over my body. The Lord said, what are you going to do? I'm going to pray. Okay, be it unto you. What do you believe? So I declare and decree over this body. I'm healed, delivered, set free. No virus, no sickness have no place in me. No, has no place in my children or my family. You can't come near my dwelling. You can't come near my mat. I declare and decree right now I'm set free. And I listen for the wisdom and instruction what God has for me. So that means I have to change up something. Because certain things is just preventative. And certain things we have to battle with. Amen? But don't make more of a battle by not doing what you're supposed to do. Zacharias, all he had to do is say, be it unto me, Lord. I'm having this supernatural encounter with you right now. So if you're coming to me, obviously you got this for me. If God has spoken, as God has said, obviously he has something for you. If he has directed you, to something he's saying that it is for you if he spoke and showed you and the thing didn't come the way you thought it was okay whatever that was how why why didn't we see it all the way through lord that's how you come to the father say lord uh you said this but we we, we didn't see the fullness it didn't come it didn't come to fruition it didn't come all the way through it's okay and Lord may have to give you some instructions. Remember I told you to do this, but you didn't do this or you didn't do it all the way. Or I told you to make that phone call. I told you to let that thing go. See, it's certain things that can bring delay. It's certain things that keeps. Though you may speak it, you can have things holding. And I don't want anything holding you back any longer. I need you to say, I'm becoming fully persuaded. I'm determined to see that which God has for me in this year. I'm becoming fully persuaded and not being shaken by the circumstance. I'm not going to be shaken by the time that has passed, but I'm going to move forward just as time does. I'm going to step into the realm of how Abraham said. He be Abram became Abraham, which God was declaring and decreeing. He made a decree. You are the father. So you, a declare can be changed, but a decree can't be changed. Once a king makes a decree, that thing can't be changed. And what has God decreed in your life? What have you decreed in your own life? See, when you make a decree, God the Father spoke to Abraham, you shall be the father of many nations. Now, the only thing that can hold that thing up is Abraham. Abraham can walk in doubt and unbelief. Abraham can be walking in uh, sin. If sin's in the camp, that will leave you in a trap. That can leave you bound. Make sure that sin is not in your camp. I'm not saying we don't miss it. We're perfected in the one who is perfection, which is Jesus Christ. My righteousness is in Christ. This human body, I shall, the, the flesh, can make mistakes and errors. But the spirit man, that who you really are, does not make mistakes. 
The spirit man of who you are is connected with the most high God and is perfect. And that spirit man of who you truly are is never sick. So you saying I don't get sick is not a lie. You saying that you're not broke, you're not a lie. Because the spirit is rich and full. But what you have to do is allow it to be led by the spirit. Fully persuaded. That I'm not this shell that you see within this camera. But I am a regenerated, reformed, recreated spirit of the most high God. And that most high God abides in me and I in him. And whatever I put my hands to is going to proper. I'm fully persuaded that this year I'm seeing myself all the way through. I'm already envisioning myself being in success, being in health, being in strength, being in power, being above and not beneath. I'm fully persuaded on what God said it spoke to me. So therefore, now that I'm fully persuaded, I see the vision. As God said to Abraham, can you number these stars? Amen. Remember that? He asked Abraham, can you number these stars? And Abraham said, I can't count all these stars. He said, so it will be of the people, the seeds that will come unto you. That was the promise. Promise made, promise kept. I'm speaking to someone today. That the promise what the Lord said to you will be the promise that God keeps to you because he makes the covenant. Man will break the covenant, but God never breaks his covenant. Be fully persuaded that I'm part of the covenant keeping God this morning. And God keeps his covenant. Up to four to three to four generations. He keeps this covenant, meaning I'm the covenant keeping God from generation to generation to generation. And you've been regenerated. You've been brought back into the fold and the fellowship of the Most High God. And since you've been brought back into the fold of the Most High God, the promises are yours. Be fully persuaded of who you are. Be fully persuaded of what you're going to do. As you go forth this year, take the mindset as Mary, Lord, be it unto me as you said. You said healing is mine, I receive. You said that I should go forth, minister word with boldness, Miracle signs and wonders should follow me, be none to me. That my child should be delivered, set free from oppression, drugs, alcohol. Is anything too hard from the Lord? Lord, you said that I wasn't going to lose my life. I wasn't going to lose my wife. I wasn't going to lose. You said victory belongs to me. So I step into the realm of victory. I want you to become fully persuaded this week. I'm determined that what God has for me, it is for me. I'm determined as God spoke to Sarah. I'm coming back at the appointed time of life. And the only thing can delay it is what you're saying. I'm coming back with your Isaac. And the only thing that can delay it is what you believe in. Because, thank you, Holy Spirit. A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Uh, the spirit realm is not aware of time. So you can be right on time, even though you're delayed. And I speak to someone that time seems to be against you. I'm speaking to someone that says, it seems like things are not moving. I want you to declare your new day right now. I want you to declare that this day, if, if, it's, if there's no measure of time, that I'm still right on time. Maybe you should have had a baby a, a lot a while ago. Maybe you should have been married a long time ago. Maybe uh, a, a business plan and um, things that God had planned for you should have been a long time ago. But we're going to step into the supernatural where he says, is anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard for God? Can I really achieve what God said? I made so many mistakes. I made so many errors. I've done so many things. I, man of God, I seem not to be moving through. But God has this word to you. Be fully persuaded. I believe God. I'm becoming fully persuaded. I'm determined that what God has for my life, I'm going to receive. I'm determined today 
I'm going to believe. I'm determined today. I walk by faith, not by sight. I walk by faith, not by sight. Thank you guys who have joined in. Thank you for the guys who have shared. Thank you for guys for the hearts. I appreciate you guys. I hope this is being a blessing to someone. I'm not called to everyone, but I'm called to someone. And this message is blessing you. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for uh, the shares. Uh, be fully persuaded and determined. Don't have the Zacharias moment where he, he spoke in doubt and God had to shut his mouth. What you determine to have, be, be fully persuaded. What do you want to see in your life? What do you want to see in your life? That's the question. And they say, is it anything too hard for God? Man of God, I want to minister the word of God. Have an I shall. Man of God, I want my family to be healed and molded. It shall be. If God has given you the raiment, if God has spoken, then it's so. We look into the spirit. The spirit man and say, Lord, if there's anything that I'm hindering, if anything that I'm restricting, Lord God, I want to let it go. Because I don't want anything about it. I'm fully persuaded in you because I've seen you do it before. I've seen that how you brought me out and brought me through. I've seen how you kept me in the midst of overwhelming circumstances. But nevertheless, we came through. Because God, must, God has a promise for you. The reason he brought you out, he didn't bring you out just to leave you halfway there. He brought you out because your time was not up yet. He brought you through because there was more that God has for you. That's why you're still here. That's why you're here in this year. That you shall be fully persuaded. Not in my ability, not, not in man's ability. The Lord says, it speaks, he says, it's not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. As the same spirit that gave strength to Abraham and Sarah, and they bore a child. It's the same spirit that fulfilled the promise to Mary that she, even as a virgin, will bear a child. Even as John, uh, um, Zechariah, and Elizabeth bore a child, the supernatural is part of this function that we're not just, this is not just storytelling time. This is the word speaking unto you right now. That someone needed to hear this. They needed to be fully persuaded. They needed to make decisions. They needed to make some changes. And God says the change is allowed to you. The life that you're searching for, that you're going to become, because you be because you're going to become fully persuaded. We're stepping into that realm when we're eliminating doubt and uncertainty. That God, I've seen you do it before. I seen you do it for others. I seen how you touch my body. You touch this other person's body. So Lord, I'm receiving that what you have for me. Let us pray. Father, this morning, we're grateful unto you. And we come unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. As you open up the new doors. As you open up unto the places that we're supposed to be. As you open up the supernatural. We're determined to be fully persuaded. That we're not going to be deceived by the enemy's trickery of having to speak the wrong thing. But I speak over the life of those who are under the sound of my voice right now. That the promises of God is yes and amen. I speak unto those who are in uncertainty, confusion, worry, has been their portion. But no longer should that be their portion because you are the God, the covenant keeping God. You are the God who says, I shall do exceedingly above what all you ask or think. So we speak right now in our lives that the dead thing that was dormant, 
the barrenness that we've been facing, that according to the appointed time, that life will be, life shall come forth. You will birth forth the thing that God said to you. The promises of the Lord are for you. I'm declaring the cream in your life that you shall become fully persuaded. And you shall have a mindset as Mary being unto me. According to what was said. What did the Lord say about you and to you? I'm speaking in their life that they're empowered. They're strengthened. Uh, that they are beautiful. That, that they are the apple of your eye. I speak in their life that everything that you have told them to do. They're going to be persuaded now. They will have no doubt, no worry. They will have confidence, not in their ability, but we have confidence in the Holy Spirit. We have confidence in the Lord Jesus. As he said that it was finished, I declare it's finished in their life. The wrongdoing is finished. The hurt and pain is finished. The uncertainty, brokenness in their heart and their mind, that thing is finished. The plague upon their life that brought destruction, that brought them in a place of sorrow, is finished. I, I speak in their life that everything that has been dormant, aborted, is coming back forth. I speak a newness, a freshness, a zeal, a drive. The hunger and thirst is coming back. That no longer will they thirst for the wrong thing, but I speak that they will have a determined mind to be everything that you have called them to be. A determined mind that they're not going to leave anything left undone. A determined mind that what you have spoke to them years ago, months ago, weeks ago, days ago, that it is their portion. Lord, bring back to their remembrance the thing that you spoke in the midst of the night. Bring back to their remembrance the thing that you have said and you have given the promise unto them. I speak in the shift right now. A shift in their finances, a shift in their health, a shift in their family, a shift. And they will move forward with confidence. Be confident in this one thing. He who begins a good work shall complete it until the end of Jesus Christ. That as they are part of the light, are they part of the fold? That you are the strength, you are the master, you are our everything. And if we have you, we have everything. I speak, there should be no longer any lateness or delay in their life. We move to a higher we move up to the higher position. We take rightfully what is ours. As you have spoke. As you have said. As you declared. Healing is the children's bread. As you have said. No good thing are you beholding from us. As you said. You are the good father. Who gives us good things. We take no worry. On what we should eat or drink. For you know we stand in need of these things. So we come to you. Seeking you first. For all the things you're doing. For all the things you have done. We love you this morning. And we say it is done. 